Today's video is all about installing our marble herringbone backsplash. We're only around halfway done, but I have enough tips and tricks to share if you're doing something similar. If you do want to do a small mosaic pattern, my number one tip is that it's going to be super time consuming. All of the cuts around the corners and edges are really tedious and will take a long time. If you have been watching our kitchen renovation series so far, thanks for that. Let me know if you have any questions and make sure to subscribe so you get all of my videos. Thanks for watching. Right now I want to talk about organizing your tiles. So no matter what kind of tiles you get, you should always open up and kind of mix them up in the different boxes for your job so you have some sort of variation. But especially true for any kind of natural stone or something that's maybe handmade because you're going to get a lot more variation. So this is the same tile and I just picked out three different sheets um, and I have a bunch of them because I need a lot for my backsplash. You can see that this one is kind of more in the lighter beige -er tone and this one has a lot more grays and um, deeper veining in these. So if you were to put them on your wall and kind of just go like this, especially for mosaic tiles like this where they're on a sheet, I mean you're really going to see kind of like a checkerboard pattern and you probably don't want that. So what I like to do is definitely mix them up, but sometimes too I'll also take off like individual tiles and then switch them. Like you could kind of put that there or whatever. Or So if I pull out this sheet, kind of looking at this sheet all alone, this one stands out to me and this one, like they're right next to each other. This one's a lot lighter and a more yellow tone and this one is a darker tone. So maybe I would replace that one with this one or I would cut the sheet in half like along the zigzags here and then kind of try and mix it up with the other one. So that's something you definitely need to keep in mind and you need to plan out ahead of time before you start gluing things onto the wall. And you need to look at your gaps here. You can see that this one is out of space. So rather than trying to kind of squish it, which is not going to squish because it's glued on the backing, you like it'll be easier just to pop that off and then kind of stick it back on after. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to organize. I'm doing the top part of my backsplash above the shelf. So I only need about five sheets. So I'm going to try and pick something there. And because it's not really touching something else, I could maybe go with a bunch of dark ones, a bunch of light ones, or try and really mix it. So we'll see what I do. While I was originally going to mix and match the tiles, I realized that it would be way too hard to try and get a perfect blend between the two different colors. While it worked for the small section, you can see here that's really obvious for the different sheets. I ended up separating the tiles into the light and dark versions and then doing all of the darker tiles on one wall and all of the lighter tiles on another wall. This way the separation is at a corner and you don't see it as much, especially once you start to add in your kitchen accessories and different countertop appliances. Before you start any tiling, you want to make sure your walls are properly prepared. For us, that involved patching a couple spots where our old countertop ripped up and then priming everything to have a perfect surface. We also tried cutting the tiles on the sheet itself. I had seen a couple of videos that had this method, but it really wasn't working for us. Not sure if it was user error or the marble tiles that we used, but we got a lot of breakage and it was really hard to keep the tile sheet straight. Okay, so I have my mix here and I have to go with one that's a quick set. I don't really like using quick sets, like basically it dries a lot faster, but I'm using this small bucket and only mixing small batches at a time because of that. And I put like a cup, and in this case it's like a laundry cup, and kind of scoop it out of the bag. Or you could just dump the bag, but it makes more of a mess that way. And whenever you're mixing your thin set, you want to obviously read the bag ratios but usually the bags will tell you like mix it the whole bag but I don't want that much so I just have a little bit in my bucket and I try a half a cup whatever amount of water you think you need try a bit less and then you can always add water 
it's easier to add water than it is to add mix. You definitely don't want to mix too much that your bucket can't handle or that you can't handle when you're actually installing your backsplash. So I'm just going to put a little bit in here and I'm just mixing it with my paddle attachment. It's kind of little. I can hand mix it, but after doing a couple buckets today, uh, my arms are getting tired. This is close, but it's a little crumbly, so I'm just going to add a tiny bit more water. And a little goes a long way. This is really good. If I was using a normal thin set, I'd kind of like it this consistency. But again, I am using like the super quick drawing, so I'm going to make it a bit wetter just because I know that it is going to harden up really fast. You can buy pre-mixed thin set, which is sometimes called mastic. I just prefer to mix my own after having a bad experience with the pre-mixed one. But again, make sure to read and use the product that's suited for your tiles. For the actual tiling portion, we had done the little section above our custom shelf ahead of time, so we kind of knew what we were in for. We started with the wall directly below that, which we called our fridge wall, and we were still attempting to cut straight lines and then put the full sheets on from there. This is also our wall that has all of the darker tiles, but now that everything is grouted, it's a lot harder to tell. When I tile, I like to have two people working. One person doing the thin set and installing the tiles, and another person cutting and getting everything prepped. It doesn't always work out that way, but it does make things go a lot quicker. Essentially, you take the straight part of your trowel, spread a bunch of thin set on the wall, at least enough to cover a square or two of your tiles, and then you use the groove side to make grooves, which your tiles will grip into. The trowel size you use depends on the tile size, but read the box of tiles, which will often tell you which one to use. You're also going to want to have some spacers handy because these will help to separate your tiles and have the proper spacing between each sheet. In a pinch, I find that the cardboard that the tile sheets are on works great as a spacer. I also like to use pieces of cardboard or the spacers to hold underneath the tiles where my countertop edge is. You don't want your tiles to be right at the counter because you could get some movement and potential issues in the future. The biggest hurdle with installing a backsplash is that you're fighting against gravity. So spacers definitely come in handy to keep everything up and upright where it should be. If you ever need to take a break when you're tiling, make sure to scrape away as much of the thin set as possible. I like to use the flat end of a trowel and then I wipe everything away with water. You definitely don't want to have to deal with dry thin set because it's a lot harder to take out. Another thing to keep in mind, especially when you're doing small patterns or stopping and starting your tiling job, is that you should try and go in one direction as much as possible. As you can see here, I was trying to match up the left and bottom parts of the tiles and I was having issues with my lines lining up perfectly, so I had to do them individually rather than putting in a full sheet. Seeing how this was such a problem at this point, I made sure to have a starting and stopping point when I went around the window. I couldn't go in both directions at one time, so I decided to stop my pattern right behind the faucet and that way it would be hidden if there was any kind of gap discrepancy. I continued moving forward doing as many full sheets or full pieces as possible and we left all of the small tiny cuts for afterwards. It was quicker to go this way rather than trying to cut the perfect lines as we went, but it still takes time no matter what. My husband was also gone when I did most of these tiles and it would have taken me way too long to try and get these perfect little pieces cut while working with my quick setting thin set. When you do go back in to do the small tiles, you can cut them individually on your wet saw or sometimes using a snipper tool if you just have a little corner to cut off. You're also going to need to back butter your tiles, which means putting the thin set directly on the back of them and then just sticking them on the wall. Like when you're installing the sheets, you're going to want to make sure that there isn't any thin set that squishes out. If there is, you can use a spacer or a butter knife to try and get it out. Because we are doing a marble backsplash, you are required to seal the marble before you install your grout, making sure it stays wet during the application and then wiping any of the sealer off afterwards. 
Notice how I was doing it with the kids, and this is how a lot of our projects go around here. For our sealer, you needed to wait a couple of days before you could grip. Mixing grout is similar to mixing thin set, and you can also buy the premixed grout as well. For our tiles, they suggested to use an unsanded grout, and luckily I had one in a white color already. I also had a sanded grout in gray, which would have worked for our kitchen color scheme. Essentially, your grout color can make or break your project. If you don't have a perfect tiling job, choosing a contrasting grout can really show those imperfections. Choosing a tile grout that's similar to your tiles will hide some of the imperfections, but it also depends on the style that you want to go for. When you're grouting, you're going to use a tool called a float, which is kind of like a rubber trowel. Then you try and push in as much grout into the cracks as possible, going at a 45 degree angle. With our herringbone pattern, it's a bit trickier because there are angles in every direction. If you're doing a larger scale tile, you can usually just stick to the grout lines compared to a small mosaic where you have to squish it everywhere. After a few minutes, you're going to want to take a wet sponge and slightly wipe over the areas that you have done. You don't want to squish the grout too much, but you do want to get anything off of the surface of the tiles. I like to work in sections at a time, making sure that the grout that I've already put in doesn't dry too much on the tiles. Once you're done, you're going to go over everything about half an hour later, wipe it again with the sponge, and then you're going to keep doing that a few times to get rid of all of the grout haze. I don't worry too much about making a grout mess on any of my adjoining surfaces, as long as I remember that I have to wipe it so there aren't any big glops before it dries. For the most part, the grout haze is removable, but it is really annoying to clean up. Finally, I just wanted to share this evolution of the same area so you can see the different stages of the tile install process, to the ceiling, to the grouting, and then the final look. to show this side of our backsplash which has been installed but isn't grouted yet there are still a couple of edging pieces that we need to put in and especially everything around the micro hood we haven't installed this cabinet fully you can still kind of move it left to right and we're waiting for the micro hood to be in and perfectly set before i finish these because i want it to go right up to the panel of the cabinet and then it's going to run along behind the oven we still have to figure out the hole for exhaust um, so our next video might not be in a week and we're still waiting on a couple of other materials to arrive before I can finish up the next thing so I just want to give that heads up and full disclosure about what our unfinished parts of the kitchen look like thanks for watching anyways